the bills, get all back to answer more goddamn questions. And the questions we're going over for today's video is the ones on the Merciful Fate secret that J-Dog spills on camera. Fuck yeah, how'd you guys like that one? We're about to see 154 comments, 1.4k views two weeks ago. You think fucking a Merciful Fate goddamn secret, which I thought was a, you know, pretty cool one to know, would get a fucking lot more than 1.4k views. I see idiots with channels fucking talking about shitty-ass Pantera getting 50,000 views. So anyways, let's see what the fuck's in here. Spencer King, not a question, but a uh, kind of a funny comment. Uh, I can't. He says a can't stand. <laughs> what is up with Devils too? And it's not just on this channel. It's not busting your guys' balls. But I thought this for years and years and years. Just seeing other people's comments and channels and just kind of emails too. Like, who doesn't proofread their shit? Like, why do people just like randomly send stuff that's completely misspelled and etc.? I don't know. It just blows my mind. You just, 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 just boop, send. I mean, you just got to take a massive shit or something. I don't know, just always been kind of a little bit of a pet peeve. But anyways, and then I can't stand a uh, vocalist about... Oh, no, I mean, so you did it right. A, a, a can't stand vocalist of mine would have to be Thomas Lindbergh of At The Gates. He has, he has one of the most annoying voices ever and had garbage fashion sense with those stupid Castro hats. You know, so it's funny, I'm kind of hit and miss with uh, Thomas. Um... I only like, when I go back and think of it, three things with them on. The grotesque. The grotesque shit's great. So uh, Spencer King, that's who it was. If you haven't heard that, listen to it. If you're listening to fucking, yeah, at the, like, come back at the Gates albums, it's not even the fucking same thing at all. So um, grotesque, in the embrace of evil, is pretty much all you need. They have some demos and shit, rehearsals, which for years I was like, why, why don't these um, why aren't these ever came, come out? So I was looking for them and, you know, talking to some people that I know, you know, do shit officially and unofficially and, like, Hey man, you guys should put this out. And then when I finally heard the demo, somebody made a CDR burn almost like, oh, never mind. Now I see why they haven't come out. They're ass unlistenable, like the sound quality, not the music. Like, you know how like some people are picky on demos, they're like the death demos sound like shit. And I'm looking at them like they're fucking retarded. Like, what are you talking about? They sound great. What do you want from a 1984 garage demo? They sound fantastic. You can hear the fucking sick ass vocals, the beats. What are you talking about? I mean, the grotesque. Just like, for example, the Mayhem uh, Pure Fucking Armageddon demo. I think everyone can kind of agree, unless you're just literally deaf, that it's it's unlistenable. You just take that demo chuck in the trash. You don't need it. It's, it's fucking garbage. Um, it's the same thing with uh, the grotesque. So that's why it never came out. So the only thing that you need is In the Embrace of Evil, CDLP. Anyways, that shit's his best stuff. And at the gates, I guess you want to put in the guilty pleasure catalog category, which I don't. Uh, I just thought it was a jam and death thrash album. I like uh, just Slaughter the Soul. And it's not because I heard, it's funny because I remember it was me, Eric, and Chase always liked that album. I think that's because that's all that was available when we got it, which was probably the late 90s, early 2000s. Everything was out of print. That's all we heard. I thought it was great. And people were like, that's their most popular, that's their sellout album. Like, when we had it, no one talked about them. I didn't see any t-shirts at shows. I never heard anybody bring them up. And any time anyone did bring up At The Gates, it was the first album. Uh, what is it? Red is the color of the sky or Kiss the Sky or whatever the fuck it's called. Anyways, when I went back and listened to that and the second album, I thought they were boring as fuck. I didn't think it was just junk or shit going down over here. Um, I didn't think it was junk or anything like that. I just I was like, this is boring as shit. Uh, grotesque, sent it home on a stretcher. But Slaughter the Soul, I just thought it was a good thrash death record that was very catchy, very memorable. Uh, like a lot of the guitar solos, uh, just really enjoyed it. Comeback shit was, I'm not going to say it sucks. It's just fucking whatever, background, this was unnecessary. But, I don't know, but also with uh, Thomas that I did like was the uh, the Crown album they sang. Uh, the uh, first pressing because they got uh, uh, came back and re-recorded with the original singer, uh, Crown of Terror. That's the last Crown album that I really, really know and really, really like. Every album after that, uh, I have most of them. I'm missing a couple of them. The last one they did, I don't, um, I don't own. Uh, Tommy over redefining darkness in the cassette. I don't have a cassette player, but I don't even think we, the CDs and LPs came through us. But the one before that, I believe I listened to was it like Doomsday X or something. I'm not familiar with them by any means, but uh, nothing sucks. It's all pretty good. Isn't there a Speed Venom album that was pretty good? But I don't. It would be a new listen on all those. The last one, too, would be kind of a new listen, but I've heard it probably good about five times. I own an LP of it, the uh, 13 album. It's after Crown and Terror. Um, I kind of know that one, too. But Crown and Terror down, like, I know I can air guitar, sing along, et cetera, et cetera. And 
I saw the crown on that tour. The first time I saw him was on Death Race King, which is my favorite crown album. Probably my favorite crown album except the first one I heard. I like it because it's like it, it's like Death Thrash that didn't sound like all the other bands trying to do it. Because for example, like the uh, early uh, like even under the Crown of Thorns, uh, that shit's fucking awesome. It's great, but vocally and stuff, it sounds like the first Desultory record. Um, I love them. No around the burning, eternal, all that. It's it's awesome. I love love those fucking records. Fan fucking tastic tens, right? But I just thought Death Race King kind of had had its own character on it. And all the songs are just I, to me that's a total fucking time. If you don't know Death Race King, you're missing the fuck out. Again, a little bit of bias over here because that's the uh, first time I heard saw him on that tour. Was that the tour they toured with Cannibal Corpse, or did they come here first and then tour again with Cannibal Corpse? Can't remember. It might have been just with Cannibal Course and the Lovers Tour or something. I definitely seen Crown twice, maybe three times. But anyway, the uh, following year, uh, they toured for Crown and Terror with uh, Thomas, and I thought he did an awesome job live. I remember. I actually actually remember the show, not like in extreme detail, but decently. And um, thought he did a very good job. I thought he said cool shit in between songs too. Uh, kind of giving how much the bangs. It wasn't his band. He's just the villain. He just you know sang on that album. Um, and I like his voice in that record. And I think that record, the top to bottom, is extremely fucking good, you know. Um, Under the Whip, it's fucking great. The, the title track, um, it's just good. It's all, all good so fucking songs. Speed of Darkness, um, super, super good fucking record. And then they re I do like the re recording too, when they, when they do like five years later with the original um, singer. That's good too. So, you know, Devils don't know that shit? Check it out. It blows away all these fucking new goddamn. Swedish bands coming out now, or non-Swedish bands that sound Swedish. I mean, like for example, to me, The Crown. Again, I'm not you, I'm not, I'm not putting any of these bands down personally or trashing them. I'm just using them as examples for the ones that are a little bit bigger, and I'm just using them as examples to kind of educate some of the younger devils, older devils that, that know better, or you have heard. Like, I heard, you know, I thought it sucked. Fair enough. At least you got to check it. I'm just giving this for educational fucking purposes. But bands like Gate Creeper, it's fine. But if you haven't even heard The Crown, it's kind of like what the fuck. Uh, don't come over here talking about Gate Creeper. You know what I mean? And I don't think Gate Creeper is from Sweden, but it sounds like Sweden definitely. And I think the Crown sends that shit home on a stretcher. But so you're allowed to disagree, but at least go fucking check it out. If you're a younger guy and you haven't heard, it's like, it's to me, it's just, it just seems kind of stupid. Uh, again, from Spencer King, right above. Yo, J Dog. No, you don't check other YouTubers out, but Wyatt X him. Gave you a shout out with the Hell's Headbangers logo appearing in this video. Oh yeah, let's check that out. Might get a little boost in, in, in sales. <laughs> God, God, damn, God damn, bro. God damn it. I don't know if these are intentional, but uh, I'm assuming the sales was kind of funny. Um, yeah, don't know why it is that the name is so. Shout out to Wyatt's letter X him. Is that the name of his channel? Um, why did he shout us out? Like, did he was he shout my video out? Was he shouting something out that he bought from Hell's? I mean, I know uh, people do like Hell's Head Headbangers unboxing videos. Which, by the way, guys, any of you guys that do unboxing videos or I bought this from Hell's Headbangers, I love that shit. Keep it coming. I was those are videos. I don't. I can't say I search them out regularly, but I've seen probably over the years when I first uh, saw it, it was it was crazy. You know, people unbox Hell's Headbangers orders on camera. This is probably ten years ago. I'm like, what? I was like, why? No. And I'm like kind of silly, but kind of cool at the same time. So um, appreciate it. Thank you guys. It's just like free advertisement. It's just you guys just always have good. I don't think I've ever seen a negative video. Like these guys fucking suck. Look at this. Check this turd out I got. Um, so anyways, thanks for that. But uh, yeah, shout out to YX, uh, him. Kind of curious what he uh, said about me or my e or uh, label or whatever. It's a goddamn questions though. Uh, Gorehound, would you see I Am Morbid with David Vincent? I mean, I can't say I definitely want to be there. Maybe as a social event, especially if the band's open. But, I mean, like, the name's dumb as fuck. David Vincent is, a, in my opinion, a fucking disgrace. Total fucking poser. Um, don't get me wrong. I love the stuff he's on. I mean, Blessed Are the Sick and goddamn... Um, Ultra of Man is for sure is one of my all-time favorite records, as you guys know. Not sure if you this. one of my all-time favorite records. But that Blessed Are the Sick, Covenant, and then Terrorizer. I mean, love that shit. And uh, But other than, dude, that guy, country band music and shit, get the fuck. Orgoth192, 192, 192, J-Dog, any thoughts on changing the name of your YouTube channel? What the fuck's wrong with the name of my YouTube channel? That's my name, goddamn. That's what I was born called, so what's wrong with that? Air over on me, getting a little sweaty in here. Fuck. K 
Cosmic Code. I know King. Like, you know him, know him. Like, buddies, like, go knock on his door. How's it going? Let's go, go to a movie. Get some chip. Go, let's go get some beer, pizza, and wings. Like, know him like that? Or you met him. I think you mean Michael Denner had a shop. That's what I said. I didn't say King Diamond had a shop. I said it was either Michael Denner or um, Hank Sherman had a uh, shop. If I didn't say it, that's what I meant, but I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I, yeah, King Diamond lives in, uh, is it Dallas, Texas? Texas for the last, what, 27 years? Since the 90s, I think? It's over 20 years? Grew up close to him here. Uh, was in his shop, unless someone else got a shop I don't know about. Uh, by the way, what is what is this name, J-Dog? Uh Watch previous videos, Rob. How do you know? It's a, yeah, it's a goof. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be ironic. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, I don't like side words, cat fucking metal, and the yo, 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 bro, that type of shit. You know, Limp Bizkit and crap like that. But, yeah, not even just them. That's the extreme example. But people um, listen to Slipknot and stuff like that. Throw the cat out. And even some of the death metal stuff when it's got this. So it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, like J-Dog, like homeboy, yo, 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 like get the fuck out of my scene. So, you know what I mean? A little bit kind of like that. So it's... Whatever you call that, um, the irony, or I know there's a word for it when you're spin out. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's for. But said in a past video, uh, I thought it was pretty self-explanatory. Sounds like some affinity for black hip hop. Laugh all out. Yeah, I just explained it. Check how Ghost ripped off uh, ripped off Mercy. It's insane. Or Van Mercy that ripped him off. Ryan Adzerta, Adzerta too. I'm sure I'm butchering your name every time. I've read like what twenty questions of yours. J Dog, question. God damn it, Raw as fuck. <laughs> what are your top five? This is fucking fan not working. Oh, where's my goddamn phone? Oh, bitch, what is sitting here? <sighs> Much better. What the fuck are you? Uh, what are you? What are your top five not metal acts? They can be rock, obviously, or punk. And no, you can't use Black Sabbath, Misfits, or ACDC in this fucking goddamn answer either. Well, what the fuck? I mean, uh, Black Sabbath, I agree, I consider them a metal band, but Misfits are... Uh, I, ACDC, I would consider hard rock, but I mean, I guess you could kind of um, put them in the category of... Uh, category of heavy metal. But I generally consider... I mean, fuck. I mean, other than that, but Misfits is just punk rock, right? Um... Bands as a whole, I mean, I like songs here and there that are not metal. I mean, I guess I kind of get your question, like stuff that's not even close. Like, for example, I like some songs by the Ramones. I mean, that, that count, I mean, that's not metal at all, right? It's like poppy punk, right? Um, but the reason I don't like to say bands or acts or groups is because like, I like songs. I was like, I was like, Ramones, most of it fucking sucks. Spider Man? I mean, get the fuck out of here. That shit was garbage. So it's like, or if there's a classic rock song, or if there's just a song that I appreciate, I'm like, oh, I could this is this is a catchy song or whatever. If it's not metal whatsoever, it's like, okay, I like one song, I like two songs. Like that, I don't, I, I'm not gonna sport a band, shirt of the band. You know what I mean? Um, so since I can't use any of those examples, I guess there's nobody. Like J Dog just so cabal. But yeah, there's other stuff like even different styles of music. I like a song here and there, sure, but. Um, Coffin Shakers? Is that a good XL? I, I thought that, I mean, I don't even know if I like everything. Not by, I, missed, I missed that. We got them in, too, and I was going to pick it up. God damn it. But from Smart Records, those LP box sets, we got like 10 of them in. They sold overnight. I'm like, fuck. I kind of want to get them. Because I own, I own a CD. I think I own an LP, too. And I have YouTube tracks. It's like country horror punk. Uh, like horror country punk. I guess that's what you could call it. It's definitely not metal. So let's say then. Um, I'm sure, I don't think I would probably like every single song they've done. And what's weird, people are like, you don't need to like every song. It's just, I'm used to guys like Camel Course, for example. I like every single song. Every single song. Mortician, I like every single fucking song. You know, I'm used to bands that I like them. I like every single song. You know what I mean? Um, Versal Fate, I like every single song. Dead Time Off, Into the Unknown, that kind of stinks. But even that, I don't think it's trash. It's just like, yeah, this song's not the greatest. But for the most part, I'm used to liking a band you like every goddamn track. You know what I mean? So Coffin Shakers, I don't know if they, I, I haven't heard everything, but I I can't think of any songs that I thought suck. Some are definitely stronger than others, but I, dude, I don't think I'd be able to list off five bands. I guess Coffin Shakers, because like everything I have heard, I recall at least liking or thinking it was okay. But yeah, man, outside of that, other than a track here or there, or somebody like that's not in the middle, like, oh, you might like this and play it or play it at a party. Sure, I might like a song here or there, but uh, bands, actual band, like the whole top five, I don't, I don't have one.
Ricky Jones, Daily Devil's Question, albums with good guitar tones. I mean, right out the gate, I mean, it's just so overused and butchered. I mean, the Swedish guitar was fucking awesome, right? He's got 10 replies in here. What the fuck are they saying? Uh, one guy. Like Paul Kreutz, he puts out Benediction Scriptures, Hypocrisy Abducted, Morgoth, Ungod. Unleashed, where no light dwells, death, spiritual healing, sinister across sticks, mercifully in the shadows. See, that, those never, the guitar tone on them never, like, struck out to me. Some of those albums I like very, very much. Some of them I don't care about. But, um, but then nothing, like, stood out to me, like, guitar tone on that. Let's see what other people's. Autopsy, Severed Survival. Same kind of thing. I mean, I guess guitar, I just love the sound of that record, how it's raw and, like, the bass and everything. I don't know if it was just guitar tone, but, I mean, I like, I do like the sound of it. Uh, well, this guitar tone, I'm sure there is somebody else, but specifically it stands out for that. Yeah, I mean, I can't draw a blank. No one's uh, directly coming, jumping out at me. Maniac Pope, what sells more in hells, black metal or death metal, or is it equal? I would say it's equal, but... Those, and I don't even know what label's doing it. They're doing a bunch of random LPs by those Cavalt looking, I'm sure they spelled like that, K V L T, uh, black metal bands, which is all black and white cover. You know, they're trying to imitate like Vlad Tepes, Belketeer, Mutilation. It's some blob ass looking cover. We're like, what the fuck is this? It's totally cheap. Uh, there's a label that's been, we've been getting a handful of vinyls by it. It's all, this has always been the case prior to this label. I, don't know what label. I know it's the same label because all shit all looks the same. A lot of the covers, it's just like, it's not even an actual cover. It's just like a, um, a thick uh, like insert on a record. I'm like, oh, gee, I've, I've seen better bootlegs than this. Um, that shit flies out the fucking door. One of the bands that began with a K, we sold, like, it was like 50 overnight. I'm like, I got to, what the fuck? I was like, I already know this is going to suck. I got to put it on just to check it out. And I'm like, it's a, it's a pinch better than I thought it was going to be, but I was like, pretty much what I expected it to be. Didn't need to flip it over to the B side. I, and like, so when that kind of stuff comes in, then that's the top seller. It just flies in the door. I'm like, I've never even heard of any of this bullshit. And most of it, people are like, well, rattle off names. The reason I can't, I can't even pronounce any of the bands. One's Grusham, Schmeiler or some shit. I can't even, it's crap. I can't even, it's like, I can't pronounce the shit. Crap's all the same. It all looks the same. Flies out the door and I'm cool and whatever. I don't care. People buy it. It's, it's awesome. But, uh, Selling over or shed the skin? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make goddamn sense to me. Abby Simmons, who's stoked for a new Dark Angel album? Not me. I didn't even know they were still around, to be honest, to be completely honest with you. I had no fucking clue they were. I mean, if somebody handed me to it, I would listen to it, but I wouldn't go out of my way. I just expect, like, kind of like if I hear Exodus is doing a new album, I just don't even care. But cool if you are. We'll knock out one more, Devils. Richard Pittman, Sup, J-Dog, what, what's your thoughts on some grind bands such as Brutal Truth, Misery Index, Pig Destroyer, Nazem, Rotten Sound? I got a funny story about the first time I ever heard Brutal Truth. Oh, it's a fucking uh, paragraph. Uh, my thoughts on them, for the most part, I don't like any of those bands with the exception of Nazem. Uh, Inhale, Exhale is fucking great. Everything else, I kind of don't know. I've listened to it at one point or another, like the 2.0 and shit. Don't really know it. I might be indecent stuff, uh, but don't know it. Don't own it. I do own Inhale, Exhale. That's the first thing I heard. I picked that up because on Relapse's uh, Contamination Comp back in the day, late 90s, early 2000s, whatever the fuck that came out. It was on there. I think it was the title track, Inhale, Exhale, maybe uh, maybe Shapeshifter or something, one other track. Uh, thought it was great. Good catch and fucking grindcore. Uh, picked up the disc. Had it ever since. Uh, when they finally uh, did an LP. Pick that up on both those, and I uh, think it's great albums this day. All the other stuff you mentioned, I could kind of care less about. Misery Index, I kind of thought about going back and listening to them, because I listened to them when they first came out, when What's-His-Face from Dying Fetus left, Jason Wright. It's kind of like, what the fuck, man? You're going on and do a grind band like that. I just wish, because to me, like, Dying Fetus was like, because I like pretty much every Dying Fetus album, the new, later ones, like, I don't really know them, but I never heard anything that sucks. Some of the some of the RPGs of Tartarus get a little carried away, and their fan base is mind-boggling, mind fucking annoying. Um, other than that, I do like them. And they're, they're Destroy the Opposition down. I love that shit. But the lineup, like on Destroy the Opposition, for example, John, Jason, Sparky, and Kevin Talley, that lineup was fucking awesome. So when that lineup kind of broke up and then he goes on to do another grindcore band, it's like, why can't you guys make it work with fucking uh, 
dying fetus. I mean, I heard stories I heard John Gallagher was stealing money, but yet it's his band. So I don't fucking know. Um, who knows? But um, that was kind of with misery. And I remember listening to it when it first came out. I think it was just an EP. I'm like, eh, it's okay. I was like, uh, I was like, fetus is way better. Let's just talk about when it first came out, early 2000s. Don't think I've ever listened to it ever since. I've been kind of curious too, but I don't know, just the whole image of it and stuff like that. kind of looks like that hardcore, grindcore stuff that I'm not huge on. Granted, I probably shouldn't go by that too because honestly, Dying Fetus, especially later, uh, the later album stuff, their image is pretty like not what I'm into too. They got the, they, they use that fucking shitty ass gay logo too, which they got to stop using that. Use the old logo. And some of the album covers like Descent into Depravity and stuff. The covers just look like that Photoshop-y kind of like deathcore crap. Get, get rid of that junk, too. I, I don't like the image of it, but um, when I put it on, I'm like, oh, it's, it's catchy shit. It still sounds like Dying Fetus, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where Misery Index is. I'm going to pick Destroyer shit. I never could, I never liked that shit at all. So that's kind of my stance on those bands. Anyways, that's it for this one, Nibbles. You know what to do. Comments, questions, concerns. Put it in the goddamn fucking comments box, and I'll get the questions fucking answered. Bright and early as always. See you later.